Hello, welcome to another video from the Animal University channel. Let's go for the video. Duck Duck, any of various species of relatively small, short-necked, large-billed waterfowl. In true ducks i.e., those classified in the subfamily Anatony and the waterfowl family Anatidae, the legs are placed rearward, as in swans, rather than forward, as in geese. The result is a distinctive waddling gait. Most true ducks, including a few inaccurately called geese, examples shelgies, by reason of size and build, also differ from swans and true geese in the following characteristics, males, drakes, and females, hens or ducks, exhibit some degree of differentiation in plumage and in call, males molt twice annually, females lay large clutches of smooth-shelled rather than rough-shelled eggs, and both sexes have overlapping scales on the skin of the leg. The wild mallard, Anas platyrinkos, is believed to be the ancestor of all domestic ducks, and it has undergone numerous crossbreedings and mutations since it was first domesticated in China between 2000 and 3000 years ago. All true ducks, except those in the shell duck group, the tribe Taternini, and sea ducks, the tribes Mergini and Somatiriini, mature in the first year and pair only for the season unlike the late maturing, life mating true geese and swans. Ducks are generally divided into three major groups, dabbling, shallow water, diving, and perching ducks, based on their characteristic behaviors. The mallard, a typical dabbling duck, any of about 38 species of anus and about 5 species in other genera, is one of the most popular game birds. Pintails, teals, shovelers, and widgeons are also dabbling ducks classified in anus, in addition to the gadwall, a strepera, and the black ducks, a sparsa, a rubripes, and a superciliosa. Perching ducks such as the muscovy, Kyrena muscata, the wood duck, Ike sponsa, and the mandarin duck, Ike scalariculata, have long claws and are the most arboreal of ducks, often roosting in trees. The diving ducks, or sea ducks, include the greatest number of marine species, such as eiders, which are variously classified as members of the tribe Mergini or placed in a separate tribe Somadiriini, and scoters, Melanida, but they also include primarily freshwater species such as mergansers, Mergus and Lophodites, the ring-necked duck, Athea calaris, and the poachards, Athea and Netta, including the scops, A. Marilla, A. Affinis, and Ad Novacilandi, and the canvasback, A. Valacineria. The redhead, A. americana, the golden eye, Bucephala clangula and B. Icelandica, and the bufflehead, B. Thalbiola, are diving ducks that live in fresh and salt water, depending on the season. Members of the stifftail group, typified by the blue-billed ruddy duck, Oxyura jamaicensis, are highly aquatic diving ducks characterized by legs set far toward the rear of the body. The whistling ducks, Dendrocygna, also called tree ducks, are not true ducks but are more closely related to geese and swans. Ducks that are not included in those larger groups are the freckled duck, Stictonetta nevosa, and the torrent duck, Merganetta armata, as well as the shell ducks, Tadorna, and the steamer ducks, Tachyaris. All ducks, geese, and swans belong to the family Anatidae. For a more detailed classification, see Anseriform. Duck raising is practiced on a limited scale in most countries, usually as a small farm enterprise, although large flocks are bred in some areas of England, the Netherlands, and the United States. The American Poultry Association lists 17 domesticated breeds, divided into four classes, heavy, medium, lightweight, and bantam. The white pecan, originally from China, is the most widely raised duck in the United States because it is meaty, fast-growing, and prodigious in egg production. Duck feathers are also of some value, though they have been largely replaced by synthetics. Eiderdown, the down feathers of the common eider, Somateria melissima, are still of wide commercial value for use in luxury quilts and pillows. There are at least 100 different types of ducks. Although geese and swans are not considered ducks, there are still roughly 100 distinct species of ducks in the world. There are 38 distinct species of dabbling ducks, ducks that tend to stick their bottom out in the water when they feed. There are also diving ducks, ducks that dive underneath the water surface in search of food, and there are also ducks that nest inside trees and sit on high branches, known as perching ducks. All ducks have waterproof feathers. Because these birds are aquatic, they must have the appropriate feathers for wet conditions. In fact, almost all ducks have waterproof feathers, allowing them not to become weighted and immobile when they are in the water. To make their feathers waterproof, they must do something called preening. Preening is when ducks gather a special oil that is produced by the preen gland, a gland located near their tails. 
Once they gather this oil, they rub it all over their bodies, thus making their feathers waterproof. Ducklings walk in line behind their mother. They call it a row of ducks for a reason. While most ducks do this as a source of foraging for food, ducklings tend to do this because their mother is their leader and directs them to their food source, eliminating the dangerous act of leaving the nest unattended in search of food for their young. While they still learn how to hunt and catch food under their mother's care, whenever they reach about one to one and a half months of age, they eventually leave their mother and start their lifelong journey without her. Most ducks are monogamous. While ducks don't always mate for life, most of them are monogamous during the mating process. They partake in seasonal monogamy, meaning that each mating season, they find a mate and reproduce, as well as form a strong bond with their selected mate during this time. When the season is over, and the eggs are laid, the pair separates, unlike swans and geese, who typically mate for life. Ducks are generally smaller than swans and geese. Ducks are classified as a distinct species, apart from swans and geese, mostly because of their smaller sizes. In fact, one of the largest species of duck is the Muscovy duck, native to South America. This species of duck can grow up to 30 inches long and can weigh up to 30 pounds, which is still smaller than the common goose or swan. One of the smallest species of duck is the Black East Indian duck, a beautiful, emerald green duck that can weigh a maximum of one and a half pounds. They are small and incredibly beautiful to look at, their feathers almost appearing as iridescent at times. The word duck is an Old English word. Ducks got their name from the Old English word ducan, which means to duck or to dive, something that these birds can do incredibly well. In fact, there are four species of duck that are notorious for being big divers. The canvasbacks, redheads, scop, and ringneck ducks are indigenous to North America and have been known to be some of the best freshwater divers in the entire world. They can dive anywhere from 1 to 6 feet underwater and last about 10 to 20 seconds without air. However, this is the only average distance and time. Many of these breeds can dive a lot deeper for a lot longer as well. Ducks are found on every continent but Antarctica. Ducks are common birds and can be spotted on pretty much every continent, except for Antarctica. However, there has been one species that has been spotted on the coasts of Antarctica. The yellow-billed pintail, a duck commonly seen in South America, has been known to vacation in Antarctica from time to time. However, it almost always stays on the coastlines and usually does not stay there for a long time due to the harsh and cold climate, as well as the vicious predators such as whales and sea lions. Ducks don't always quack. While ducks are most known for quaking, this isn't the only form of communication that they use. In fact, ducks can use a series of different noises to communicate. They can also produce a series of barks, honks, growls, coos, chatters, and much more. Although they do not sing like most birds, they have also been known to purr at times as well. They can also communicate non-verbally, rustling splashes in the waters with their bills or the leaves and grass with their feet. They truly are a unique and incredible species with a lot of variety. I hope you enjoyed this video enough and it was informative. Please like the video and subscribe the channel. Introduce us to your friends. Good luck to you all.